Welcome to Cloud Infrastructure Services YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to go over the top 10 DNS attack types and how to prevent those attacks. So let's just get started. Throughout this video, we are going to be defining DNS attack, general information about those attacks and then we are going to define how to prevent those attacks. So number one on our list we have DNS cache poisoning attack. Cache poisoning is one of the most common attacks that aims to direct users to scam websites. For example, user accessing gmail.com through their web browser to check their emails can be redirected to some other hoax website and from there your precious data or your valuable information can be hacked or leaked. So how do you prevent yourself from DNS cache poisoning attack? Well, the prevention is very simple. You need to restrict or limit recursive queries. You need to store the data that is related to the domain requested and you should only return domain specific information in response to a query. In addition to this, organizations can also use cache poisoning tools to prevent outbreaks of cache poisoning. Number two on our list is distributed reflection denial of service. This is very similar to DDoS attack, but actually this is DRDDoS attack. Now, distributive reflective denial of service attack aims to disrupt the availability of a particular asset by sending an overwhelming number of UDP acknowledgements. And in some instances, an attacker may send DNS, NTP, etc. protocols and use a spoofed source IP. So how do you prevent yourself against DRDoS attack? Well, to begin with, distribute the servers among different data centers. After that, ensure that you have multiple networks connecting to your data centers. Make sure that there are several paths leading to the data center. Ensure there are no single point of failure or important security holes in the data centers for connected networks. And then, for those organizations that rely on internet ports and servers, it is crucial to have devices distributed geographically and not located in a single data center. After that, number third on our list is DNS hijacking. DNS hijacking involves redirecting to a questionable DNS by an individual. However, attackers also accomplish this by installing malicious software or altering the server without the authorization. So how do you prevent yourself against DNS hijacking? Well, make sure that you check your network for resolvers, protect a name server by restricting access, take measures to prevent cache poisoning, patch the known vulnerability instantly, ensure that the authoritative name server is separate from the resolver. Finally, avoid the zone alterations. That is going to help you prevent yourself against DNS hijacking. Number fourth on our list is phantom domain attack. The attacks on phantom domains are similar to those on casual subdomains. In this type of attack, an attacker tries to exploit your DNS resolver and use up the available resources. Now we refer to this as phantom domains since phantom domains do not respond to queries. Anyways, how do you prevent yourself from phantom domain attacks? Adding more recursive clients is the first step and then ensuring that the recursive queries are restricted per server and recursive inquiries are restricted per zone. Also, allow holding down the server for non-responsive request. And what you can do is that you can monitor recursive queries by zone. Now, number five on our list is TCP SYN floods. Now, SYN floods are types of denial of service DDoS attack that target any inherent related operations using the transmission control protocol, which is the TCP. So how do you protect yourself from TCP SYN floods? There are a lot of prevention that you must take to protect yourself from SYN floods. To avoid a single point of failure on the network, it is the first necessary to provide appropriate support for both inline and out of band deployment. After that, in today's sophisticated attack methodologies, they require a multi-facet program that considers more than just of the foundation of the internet and the availability of the network. Then you need to have a broad network coverage as well as the capability of examining traffic from different parts of the network. And then you need to have a variety of threat intelligence sources including custom and entrance alerts, data-driven exception detection, and identifying known threats with fingerprints ensuring rapid and accurate detection. Number 6 on our list is random subdomain attack. Now this type of DNS attack does not occur very often but it does happen on some networks from time to time. Since the goal of this random subdomain attack is the same as a simple DDoS attack, often it is identified as a DDoS or a DOS attack. Now, the attack aims to create a DOS that will affect the authorized DNS server by which the primary domain name is received, thereby interrupting the DNS record queries. So how do you protect yourself from random subdomain attack? 
Well, to begin with, you will need to learn how to mitigate the attacks that result in a large amount of traffic on the resolvers and web resources that are linked to victims, which can be easily taken down. Secondly, you need to learn about response rate limiting, a modern capability that preserves DNS experts who provoke these kinds of attacks. Number 7 on our list is actually DNS tunneling. Now, this cyber attack encrypts data from multiple applications and transmits it inside DNS acknowledgement. A DNS tunneling attack requires access to an established system along with a domain name, DNS authoritative server and internal DNS server. How do you protect yourself from this kind of attack? Well, it is pretty simple. You need to set up an access rule, you need to make a protocol object and you need to develop an application rule as well. Number 8 on our list is DNS flood attack. Now when it comes to DNS attacks, it is one of the most common type of DNS attacks in the category of DDoS. This kind of DNS flood has the primary intent of completely overloading your server, making it unable to serve DNS requests. So how do you protect yourself from DNS flood attack? Well, at first you need to make sure that your DNS resolver is private. After that, you need to take advantage of DDoS mitigation services. And then what you can do is that you can put a patch management system in place. And then you can invest in a dedicated DNS server manager in which DNS is to use a dedicated server. And oftentimes you can perform DNS audits which will tell you about the loopholes of the DNS. At number 9 we have domain hijacking. Now domain hijacking involves setting up your domain registrar and DNS server in a way that it is able to redirect traffic from your actual servers to the new ones. So how do you prevent yourself from DNS hijack? Well, first and the foremost step is to update your DNS setting in the application foundation. And then you need to have a secure access. What you can do is that you can use the DNS SEC and a client side lock. The last entry on our list is a botnet based attack. Now botnet based attack is a collection of internet connected devices that attacker use to launch distributed DDoS attack that steal data, send spam and allow attackers to gain access to particular devices. Now, botnet attacks can also be used to do a brute force attack as well. Anyways, how do you prevent yourself from botnet based attacks? You need to start by understanding your vulnerabilities. Once you have done that, you need to ensure that the IoT devices are secure. After that, you need to distinguish between your mitigation myths and facts. And then what you can do is that you need to apply these three steps, identify, categorize and then control. Now that was all of the items on the top 10 DNS attacks and the prevention for these attacks. Now if you still want to learn more in detail knowledge about all of these entries then what you can do is that you can simply check the blog in the description box. And if this video has helped you in any way make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel.